I'm Reverend William Washington Brown, and I have always wanted more from life, more than slavery, more than working for a master. I was born in Georgia in 1849. My papa was Joseph Brown and mama was Mara. They were from Virginia. They gave me the name Ben, but it don't matter much because I was sold away from them when I was eight years old and then I was sold some more until William Washington, a horse trader, bought me. We lived near Memphis, Tennessee. That's where I got my name from. I took my chance at freedom in 1862 when the Union Army came to Memphis. I ran away and joined up with them. I got my first taste of freedom and it sure was sweet. I stayed with them until the war ended. Then I went to Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin in 1866 to go to school. I knew that I needed an education to reach my dreams. I finished school, came back to Alabama in 1869. There I met my lovely wife, Mary A. Graham. We got married August 1st, 1869. I was teaching school and people respected my education. They wanted me to be more active in the community because all over Alabama and Georgia, the Ku Klux Klan was terrorizing Negroes. I spoke out against them. Before this, right after the war, I worked at a saloon in Cairo, Illinois. I started drinking heavy and realized that I needed help to stop. So after I got married, I called on the Alabama Independent Order of Good Templars for sobriety help. They were kind and all, but being colored, I could not join them. But they helped me start a black organization, the Grand United Order of True Reformers. I quit my teaching job and started chapters in Alabama. Being a good speaker and organizer, I founded 50 local chapters, or sub-fountains. That's the number required for a state-recognized organization, a grand fountain. I looked for a church to enhance my reach and join the Colored Methodist Episcopal Church. At the Alabama Conference in 1876, I was ordained and licensed to preach. In 1876, the Grand Lodge of Good Templars of Virginia invited me to lead its new branch of the True Reformers in Richmond. Now that was a challenge, and despite early rallies, interest failed. So I came back to Alabama. I had my dreams to address dreams of creating an empire. I saw an insurance company, bank, and other businesses. But in Alabama, they knew how to keep a colored man with dreams down. They would not grant my petition for an insurance license. So in 1880, I moved to Richmond, Virginia, because pursuing your dreams sometimes means a move. Virginia was better. The Virginia General Assembly passed a bill in 1884 to incorporate the Supreme Fountain of Grand United Order of True Reformers. And in 1885, we started the Mutual Benefit and Relief Plan of the Order. It was a savings and death benefit insurance for members and their family. This was the first insurance plan created by a colored fraternal society that was based on actuarial uh, calculations of life expectancies. Members paid fees according to their age. That worked out very well. But we didn't stop there, and hard work pays off. In 1889, the True Reformers Savings Bank was started in my home. In the meantime, reformers continued to plan our next expansions. We were diligent with every dollar. We completed a reformers hall for meetings that also served as our offices. By 1891, 
membership was almost 10,000, and we had the largest Negro-owned building in Richmond, a new three-story building. This housed our bank, offices, four large meeting rooms, and a concert hall. Before long, the true reformers acquired a 150-room hotel, started a home for old members, and published a weekly newspaper. We set up a program to teach the children thrift and savings for responsible money management their entire lives. Yes, this was the 1890s, but success is worth the price. I'm so proud to inform you that during the financial panic of 1893, our bank was faithful to our deposit holders. We were the only bank in Richmond that honored all of our members' checks. All around Richmond, the true reformers stood for growth, uplifting our race, and building financial strength by working together with believers in the goals. No matter how hard you work, there are always naysayers, but I can hold my head up any day. I was honored to be one of only eight men, including Booker T. Washington, selected to represent Negroes at the Cotton States and International Exposition in Atlanta in 1895. The visitors were impressed seeing the True Reformers exhibition and all that Negroes could achieve in the South. I feel that my dreams have come true. When my doctor told me that they discovered a cancerous tumor and wanted to amputate my arm, I talked to my wife and decided, no, these 48 years, God has blessed me with the best wife and two adopted children. I have a beautiful home and money to leave her. I am at peace. William Washington Brown died in Washington, D.C. on December 21st, 1897. 